Wow, time has passed so quickly in this past week and it's already time again for a new episode of reviewing your underwater films coming up. Welcome back to the channel, you underwater filmmakers out there. It's great to see all you smiling faces again for yet another episode of reviewing your underwater films. In today's episode, we'll be looking at a film made by Brian Balagula. I'm hoping to uh, have pronounced this correctly, Brian. Thank you very much for your submission and for allowing me to review your film here within this series. And without any further delay, let's jump right into Brian's film and see what is waiting for us. Oh wow, a nice little animation there to begin with. Ah, and here we are. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, this is uh, in Florida. <laughs> Gotta love these guys. <laughs> nice, good use of the light here, giving your object some extra light there in the face, bringing the colors out a little better. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh wow, that's a lot of fish, nice, and they're very tricky because they're so shiny, they reflect back your light quite a bit. Yeah. So I'm guessing this must be Brian, hello Brian. <laughs> a nudie branch filmed with a GoPro 9. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like you've used a macro lens for this, which makes it pretty much impossible to get a good shot that is in focus. Hmm. 
Yeah, it's tiny. All right, let's stop this. Excellent, good job, Brian, well done. Thank you again so much for submitting your film here to the series. Let's have a quick look and talk about this film and what was good and what could be improved. Personally, I did like the music that you chose for this film. It had uh, a very happy, upbeat, um, or yeah, upbeat beat, uh, an upbeat feeling to it. And, uh, and yeah, just transported a really good feeling uh, while watching the film and listening to that music. So uh, thumbs up on choosing that track. I really like that. I think it worked well with the clips that you showed. Now things that I uh, think you could improve on is the stability of your footage. I'm not sure if you were using a tray or if you were just having the GoPro in your hand. Uh, if you weren't using a tray, I would strongly recommend to uh, consider getting a tray, placing your camera, the GoPro in there and holding the tray with both hands. That's gonna give you a lot more stability, tucking the elbows into the sides and just trying to get more stable shots that way. Also, the uh, GoPro Hero 9 is not too bad with internal stabilization, but make sure that's turned on. And then you can also use um, warp stabilizer in your post-production software if you still find that your footage is a little shaky. Um, I think personally I just don't really enjoy watching it shaky, watching shaky footage. I think it's much much nicer if we have uh, fluent uh, control movements um, underwater. Just the whole feeling of being underwater, that's what I connect with slow, controlled uh, movements and shaky moves just don't really fit into that image for me. So trying to avoid that is definitely gonna improve your underwater films. Um, let's talk about the close-up shots. Uh, they were not just the nudie branch towards the end, at the beginning with the porcupine fish, you did have a couple of shots. I think it's difficult to say on uh, uh, YouTube with the compression that we get, but I think that some of these shots were not quite in focus either because you were getting too close to the porcupine fish, too close to your object, and the GoPro wasn't able to focus uh, at such a short distance. There's two ways to avoid this. Way number one is not to go this close, just to stay further away but then maybe play with your field of view because you have on the GoPro Hero 9, you've got different uh, field of views. You can use a, a ultra wide, a wide, I think it goes to narrow, I think it's three or four different field of views that you can choose there. So if you wanna film something that is smaller, switch to a narrower field of view. This is gonna uh, give you, um, or just gonna make it look like you're closer at uh, your object. Um, the other option is to uh, get a macro lens that you can put in front of the GoPro and that will enable you to go as close as probably about four, three to four inches to your object and still be able to capture that object uh, focused, in proper focus. And this would have helped a lot with the nudie branches at the end. Uh, I know when you see stuff like this, you always wanna keep it in your videos, but honestly speaking, it doesn't really make much sense to have a uh, completely blurred out image of a nudie branch in your film there. It's for your personal memory, yes, you remember that you've seen this nudie branch, but for anyone else watching the film, they don't really get much out of it because it's, it, it's a shot that's pretty much unusable. Uh, so I wouldn't even leave it in the film, I would take these shots out. And then for future uh, underwater filming projects, if you do wanna capture more of these macro shots, which is perfectly fine, go ahead. You can do that with your GoPro, but you do need to get a macro lens in terms to be able uh, to do that. Um, and the last thing that I wanna mention, and this is not as much a suggestion as a question, um, there was some crackling sound throughout the video and I wasn't sure what that was. Was it the original sound that was recorded by the GoPro or did you uh, do any uh, sound design? Did you use anything else that you uh, put underneath your music um, or on top of the music to create that sound? That would be very interesting just 
from a personal standpoint for me to uh, know and understand because at the beginning when the music was louder I couldn't hear it and then towards the end of the clip it was very noticeable that there was some crackling going on at some point there was some breathing uh, to be heard as well if you want to keep that in, I would keep it in throughout most or throughout the entire film because everything was underwater. So if you want to keep that in, keep it in. Uh, just have it sequentially in there. Um, don't really know how much sense that really makes. Um, yeah, so that, uh, that's my two cents I've got for you, Brian, to help you improve your underwater filmmaking. Thank you again for submitting your film and for uh, allowing me to review it here within this series. I hope that the feedback, the inputs that I was able to give you today, that they were beneficial and useful to you and that you can use them to improve your underwater filmmaking in future um, attempts and in future projects that you'll be making. As always, I will be linking um, Brian's video in the video description below and I was also going to be putting a link to Brian's YouTube channel down below. So feel free to go and pay him a visit, leave a like, leave a comment, leave a subscription or just say hi, whatever you want. And hopefully for everyone else watching, this video was beneficial as well and you were able to learn something from uh, Brian's video and my review of this video submission today. If that was the case, please do not forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel so you're not missing out on any future content that will be uploaded here. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you very much for your time, guys, and for watching. Enjoy capturing your underwater adventures, and I will see you in the next video.